Okay, hey there. How y'all doing? Let's see, we're going to go live with Miss Tina. Here we go. If we can get this right. Okay. Waiting for Tina to come in. How is everybody doing tonight? We are going live on Instagram with Unfiltered with Cara Jones Unlimited LLC podcast. Tonight I am featuring Miss Tina Freeman. She is my featured guest tonight. And we are going to be completing the second episode of my health series. The topic tonight is albinism. Just waiting for my future guest to come on camera with me. How's everybody doing? You guys doing all right? Everybody have a good day staying cool out of this heat? Because I know I was like burning up. I'm still burning up. I got this water. It's not necessarily for drinking. I might have to put it here to cool down. <laughs> okay, waiting for you, Tina. I don't see you on my camera. Where are you, love? Let me see. I just added you, so come on, camera. Are you looking into your camera? You decline, but you can't decline if we're doing an interview, so I need you to come on camera. Hey, Nellie, how are you? Hi. Where's my girl? Hi, Miss Jones. How, how are you? How are you? I'm doing good, love. Well, how are you this evening? I am doing excellent, excellent. Okay, okay. Well, we're going to get this thing going. I was just telling our viewers as they come into the room that we are streaming live from my Instagram story yes, on my Unfiltered with Car Jones Unlimited podcast, and you are my featured guest, Miss Tina Freeman. Thank you for having me this evening. I really appreciate it. I am it. so happy. Thank you, ma'am. I'm happy that you accepted my invitation. Yes, so ma'am. So how was your day in Alabama? It was wonderful, great, and amazing. And how was yours? Okay. Quite busy as usual. Quite <laughs> busy. Can you scoot over a little bit more to the middle of your camera so that your body is off the screen? I'm sorry. Okay, that's good. Yes, ma'am. No, that's fine. I just want to make sure that I get you know, a good view of you because, you know, we got to put this a whole bunch of places. So we're going to get right into this. And why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself? I know you're from Montgomery, but tell us a little bit about you. My name is Tina Freeman. I am from Montgomery, Alabama. I am 34 years of age and I am a certified phlebotomy tech, certified EKG tech and a certified CCMA. And I just enjoy just being inspirational to other people and just be inspired and uplifting and encouraging to others. Okay. So, you know, tonight we are doing the second episode of my health series. And um, what you and I had talked about was sharing information and educating people on the genetic pigmentation condition called albinism. Yes, ma'am. So what does that mean to you? Albinism is where the color pigmentation does not develop in the body, nor does it develop behind the eye socket as well. And okay. when it's not developed, it's not that we are different, but we just do not have any skin pigmentation. Interesting. I like your choice of words there. Yes, you yes. carefully said we are not different. Correct. 
Correct. Why did you choose those words? I feel as we are all humankind and we should be treated equally and as one accord as a unity and just continue to embrace each other, whether it's albinism, whether it's African American, whether it's any other race, I just feel we need to embrace each other. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know, I'm drinking some water because I'm hot. It's fine. You know, it's fine. <laughs> well, 54, honey, will keep you hot all the time. <laughs> okay? So you got to keep ice and everything on hand. You'll get there one day. Keep on living as the old folks say. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So, you know, it, it's interesting because when people you know, look different than us, sound different than us, you know, dress different than us. Hey there. Um, walk different than us. You know what I'm saying? People have a tendency to sometimes then treat you differently. Yes, ma'am. You know what I'm saying? Yes, ma'am. And so, you know, I would wonder, and therefore I would ask the question of you, as you were growing up as a child, what were your experiences like being socialized in the region where you grew up? When I was in elementary, I wouldn't say, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry. I wouldn't say it was bullying, but other peers was trying to figure out, you know, what color am I? Uh, am I black? Am I white? So I wouldn't say it was bullying, but they was trying to figure out um, what color I was and try to understand it while they're you know young. But as I grew older, um, going to junior high and high school, I had plenty of friends that embraced me that loved on me, that encouraged me, that just kept me going, kept me with positivity, encouraging words. And I just embraced it um, throughout the years. <laughs> okay. I'm happy to hear that, you know, because you, know, you grew up in Montgomery, Alabama. Is that where you grew up, Montgomery? <laughs> Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. Yes, I grew up in Montgomery, Alabama, and I I love it here. Oh, you, you okay? So you're back in Montgomery. Yes, ma'am. I am. I am back in Montgomery, Alabama, and I just okay. I love it. I love it. Yeah, I love every minute of it. I love every everything about Montgomery. The 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 atmosphere. I just love every minute of it. I'm happy to hear that. I'm happy to hear that. So let me just ask you this. You, you indicated that albinism is how you pronounced it, um, can impact the vision, that there's no pigment behind the eyes. Is that what I heard you say? Yes, ma'am. That is correct. When I say it does impact the vision, which means we are very sensitive to light. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry. When we go out in the sunlight, we have to wear sunglasses. And we are so intrigued on by just being sensitive to light, sensitive to sunburn as well with our skin as well. And sometimes mm -hmm. the sun... Um, actually have uh, the indication of burning our eyes just a little. It depends on what time of day is it, um, where the sun is set, and how we approach the time of day when we go out in the sun. I would imagine that you might have some sunburn Type issues. So do you use a lot of sunscreen and stuff like that? 
I did use a lot of sunscreen when I was younger, but as I got older, okay. I tried something different. Um, like you said, Miss Jones, I, I did use sunscreen when I was younger, but as I grew older, I found out sunscreen actually make me burn worse. If I do okay. not, if I do not use any sunscreen, I, I still get sunburned, but not as bad. But I also just watch, you know, what I eat. And a lot of people do not understand sometimes at being an albinism, it can be certain things you eat can make your skin burn as well when you go out into the sun, whether it is um, grapefruit, orange, apple, it tends, because it, it has a, a, that type of sensitivity in the fruit or in that food to absorb through our skin to make us sweat mm. and just come through our pores and just make us burn. So we have to be careful yeah. about certain things that we eat and even as we drink as well. Interesting. That is very, very interesting. I would have never thought that. Yes, ma'am. Never. And when, you know, initially when you started talking and you were saying, um, grapefruit, and then you said orange, I was thinking, oh, well, maybe it's a citrus thing. You know, is it a pH balance? But then you said apple. Yes, ma'am. So it is most, most time it's the citrus. The citrus fruits you really okay. have to, to watch out for. I'm not saying don't eat it, but just be careful. Like if, if you're going outside during the hottest time of the day, because it, it tends to make you sweat more. So that's how when you sweat more, you burn a little more. But um, like I said, you know, just always be careful. Um, put in, you know, just put sunscreen on. As Even as regular African-Americans always put sunscreen on. But with me, I just learn throughout my life that sunscreen actually tends to make me burn worse. So I do not use gotcha. it. I do not use it. Gotcha. I wanted to compliment you on that beautiful blonde hair that you have, darling. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know, blonde is in, and I usually have a little bit more in my, my, my bangs and my hair. I get some streaks, you know, but I would, I would like to think that the, the girls around the town be wanting that natural blonde hair you have, my sister. Yes, ma'am. And Miss Jones, I have gotten question asked, is this my natural hair color? Did it come in a box? Did I dye it? <laughs> it is my natural hair color. Um, I have blonde eyebrows and it's I'm just natural. And it's beautiful, and I love that hairstyle you have. That cut is very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Such a beautiful person. I remember when I met you, Tina Freeman. <laughs> you came across my Facebook page. You know, you calling me Miss Jones, but everybody knows my name is Chandra Perdue. But don't, don't, don't turn. It's okay. Because I take it as a nickname. You know, Bakara Jones Unlimited is the name of my performing arts company. But as I was saying, I remember a couple years back when I met you, I was just going through my uh, news feed, I think is what you call it, right? And I saw this picture come across my news feed, and I was like this, <sighs> who is she? Who is this beautiful woman? And I went to your page, and I sent you a friend request, boom. And you accepted it, and I was just going through, you know, your timeline, and I just, I was just so enamored with you, because you're so beautiful. Thank so you. Beautiful. Thank you. <clears throat> ended up doing a tribute. I don't, I do a few tributes, birthday tributes, you know, happy birthdays every now and then. I don't do them as much now because I don't have that kind of time, but I ended up doing a birthday tribute for you, and I remember saying, how enamored I was, how gorgeous, gorgeous, I say, you are. Thank you. Know? you. Thank you so much, Miss Purdue. I really appreciate it. <laughs> now I'm Purdue. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> you know I got a sister here, but right? Yes, yes. 
I really am uncanny sometimes. But, you know, Tina, I just really appreciate you. And as we have chatted and got to know each other better, I really appreciate the love that you have for God and God's people. And that means all people. And that's how I, I was raised and how I live, too. And you shared some other things with me about what goals you have. And I think that you have some wonderful goals. Um, it, it seems like your life journey has prepared you and even somewhat steered you for the direction that you are going in in terms of the endeavors that you have in um, progress to establish this nonprofit. Tell me what you're getting ready to do. I'm getting ready to establish a nonprofit organization called Reflections of Love. And with that nonprofit organization, I just want to reach out um, to society with many people that's facing challenges, whether it's albinism, whether it's visually impaired, whether it's facing heart disease, diabetes. I just want to reach out to different other people and just let them know it's okay to be different. It's okay to go through challenges. It's okay to feel like that, that, that it's okay to be different. But also I want to let them know that during that time of, of feeling despair or going through, I just want to let them know that it, that there is someone there who cares who's been there, who has faced those challenges, who has overcame them, and just let them know, mm -hmm. if I can do it, you can do it as well. And you have to just stay focused and just continue to just be a helping hand and just be a positive outreach to, to many people. And, you know, that's a wonderful thing because all of us face challenges. We face them daily, weekly, monthly quarterly, yearly, you know, there's always something going on. And during this pandemic with COVID-19 that we are um, experiencing, the challenges have just multiplied, you know, and none of us knows what our realities or our new normal is going to look like when all of this is over. Yes, so yeah. I'm saying all of that just to say, I know that the services that you are looking to render our offer will be much needed and much appreciated. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So are you going to um, focus on the Montgomery, the city of Montgomery or surrounding areas? Where will you be? I plan? will focus on Montgomery, Wetonka, Prattville, Deetsville, Millbrook, Hope Greenville. If the Lord is willing, I may reach out to other different cities, different other states, even overseas in different countries, because you, the need is so great that, you know, it's, I always say never put a person in a box, because when you put a person in a box, they just feel like they're just small. So when, once you just say, you know, I'm going to step outside the box for a moment and just say, I can do great things. I can reach this person. I can reach that person by just even just lending them a helping hand or just giving them a tool to work with, whether it's encouraging them or supplying paper, backpacks, clothing, toiletries, whatever it may be. I just want to just let them know that my organization is here. The doors will be open 24-7, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. And I'm just a phone call away, a phone call away. Excellent, excellent. Well, you know, a nonprofit organization, with, with that in place, you'll be able to help a lot of people. And you also have the opportunity to collaborate with other existing nonprofit organizations. And there are many in the River Region area that you mentioned in Central Alabama where you intend to, you know, set up shop. So I know that, you know, you and your um, business will be embraced. Tell me something. I'm going to ask you something. I heard you say something about heart, the heart, 
and albinism. I have never heard anyone associate potential heart issues with albinism. Do you mind talking about that a tad? That is fine. I was born, I don't know if many of you have heard, blue baby syndrome. Blue baby syndrome is when the valve in the heart does not develop and you do, does not have any oxygen to go to the brain. So by me being albino, my valve was undeveloped. And as I grew older, I began to realize that, okay, I know I'm not normal. I know I'm just uniquely made, but I know I can get over my heart problems, my heart troubles. So which my parents, when I was small, I was born in Montgomery, Alabama, at Jackson Hospital. I had four open heart surgeries. They corrected the valve mm -hmm. issue. And I've been doing great, excellent ever since. Good. Thank you for sharing. You I know that must have been, you know, kind of scary for your parents because it, I've never birthed children myself. I don't have any children, but I, you know, know people like my one of, well, actually two of my God children were born with some um, health issues and had to undergo uh, major surgeries as children as well. But like you said, they overcame like you. Yes, ma'am. And they have developed into fine adults. No inadequacies whatsoever. So we know you and I are Christians, so we know that there is a God that we consider our higher power who, um, you know, made that possible. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And I just tell people, when you put God first, there is no limit. There is no limit to what you can do. You just yes. have to stay focused. Absolutely. And I'm glad you brought that up because another thing I wanted to talk to you about, you mentioned early on that as a child, when you were in elementary school, you didn't want to call it necessarily bullying, but maybe there was some interactions that, you know, you had that were not as pleasant. Might that be okay to say? That's correct. That is fine. When I was in elementary, uh, I did go through my momentarily of depression because some of the kids, like I said, some of the kids were still trying to figure out, you know, am I black? Am I mixed? Am I white? But as I grew older, I fully understood that that I am an albino. I'm still no different from anyone else. I'm just as a regular human being. And I just understood that, hey, you know, being albino is just being a different part of a, of, of a different world for us, just letting the world know that there is just a beautiful creation. I'm just into a, I just turned out to be a beautiful butterfly. And ever since oh. then, I just, I love it. I love it. You know, I, I like that you said that, and uh, you said another beautiful creation. And that's one thing I like about this world, right? The, the, I love the diversity of this world that we live in. I love the culture. And for me, when I say diversity and culture, when I use those terms, I'm talking about, you know, racial and ethnic backgrounds. I'm talking about how we look different, how we talk and sound different. We speak other languages. We express ourselves differently. And just like you said, Tina, I believe that it's only fair as we want to be accepted that we accept others. Right. Exactly. That we, that we not judge people, that we just allow people to be. You know, there's a saying that says, just live and let live. You heard that one before? Live and let live. I heard of it, but I, I still can un fully, fully understand it. <laughs> it's basically what you said. Just embrace everybody. Just let, you do what you do and let other people do what they do. And we all do what we do and we coexist. Exactly. Exactly. So with those 
you know, situations that you encountered in school and with maybe some of the other challenges that you have had to face, I'll use that word, um, growing up, um, adjusting your diet, adjusting your lens. How have you coped mentally when you, have you ever experienced any anxiety or depression behind your difference, so to speak? I never experienced anxiety or depression due to the fact that I had a strong family support system. I had a strong Wonderful. church family support system. And outside of that, I had positive friends as well, to, even to this day. So I wouldn't say it was depression, anxiety. It was just overcoming hurdles, you know, for as obtaining a learner's permit or obtaining a driving license, which I have a driving license, so I do know how to drive. But, yeah. yes, and um, I just just learned how to just push myself more to motivate myself, to encourage myself, and just say, you know, I did it. I did it. Um, just, just, I might have to excel a little harder, but it was nothing else, no different than anything else. When you went to get your driver's license, or as you were preparing to get your driver's license, knowing that your vision was a little bit um, different or impaired, um, were there special things or extra steps you had to take? Yes. Um, I had to go through driving courses due to the fact of my vision impairment. Mm -hmm. And I had to attend so many hours of studying for is I do not wear bifocals. Uh, a lot of people get that twisted with vision impairment and, and bifocals as well. Bifocals is where the glasses or the lenses are so thick that they're thick and you only can drive during the day. So I can drive at night and I can drive during the day. So my vision doesn't stop me from driving or stop me from operating a vehicle. It's just that I have to have certain devices in my vehicle for me to drive. I wear trifocals. Wow. Never knew. <laughs> These are called trifocals. Okay. I used to, I think, in my latter 30s and 40s were bifocals. Wow. But as I started approaching my mid-40s to 50s, I wear these when I walk and when I drive. They help me because I am becoming nearsighted. And like you, I have my eyes are sensitive to light. So Outdoors, like direct light, sunlight, and all that, I have the transition that shades it for me because my eyes can get weaker in the light. And I also have on a so transition. I can relate. Yes, ma'am. And I have on a transition. Yes, transition too? yes ma'am. I have on a transition mm -hmm. glasses as well. And they also. Awesome, um, awesome. They, uh, when, when you drive too, I wanted to let everyone know when you drive, um, some app. Albinos, they have to have the dark tint as well to block out the sun. On the, on the windows? Yes, ma'am. On the windshield, you mean? Okay, okay, good, good. Well, you know, everybody doing that now, but let me ask you, do you use the regular, apply the regular window tint, or, or with your condition, do you have a special permit to have it darker? I just applied the regular tint, but they also told me that I can get the special tint. But the thing about mm -hmm. with the special tint, if you're driving at night, if, if it's extremely, extremely dark, you still will have problems seeing at night. So it would be best to just apply the regular tint. 
Got gotcha. you. Okay, so there is a Kawanda Murphy who has joined our live, and I don't know if you can see her comment, but she says she also has a very beautiful voice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Kawanda. I appreciate it. <laughs> you know what? With that voice that you have, I wanted to ask you, do you sing? So you sound like a strong alto. <laughs> I sing, I sing every once in a while, Miss Purdue. I sing every once in a while, but my 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 I try to sing, but I don't <laughs> I don't sing to you. <clears throat> okay, okay. So we're gonna be um, closing this thing up soon, and you know, I just I really applaud you, you know, for sharing your story. I think that. You know, it's important for all of us to be able to talk about, you know, um, our experiences, so to speak. And you having embraced, overcome, and persisted, persevered, you know, through life, dealing with, you know, the heart condition as a baby, four surgeries overcoming any physical limitations that that might have early on, you know, um, you know, caused for you. Hey, bold addictions, girl, where is my bling? That's the bling <laughs> lady. Oh, <laughs> You need to check her out, Tina. Okay. <laughs> I get my bling from her. Definitely. Oh, girl, she out the chain. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. But I'm just saying, you know, it, I think it's really important, and I applaud people who can talk about what they've been through. Yes. And, um, hey, that, you know, you don't get stuck. Yes. Because a lot of times, I see my colleague, Ask Nelly. She's a, a, one of the Instagram therapists, and she posted something the other day. Maybe it was yesterday, even. She said, you could be a victim. And, yeah, we all may have been victim to something or experienced something, right? But we can't get stuck. Exactly. So, exactly. Yeah, you know, something that comes up a lot of times. I know it comes up for me with some of the things I've been through, are like triggers. Have you experienced any triggers in your along? You know, I would say along your journey, um, pertaining to, I would say, some of those challenges that you have faced. What triggers is, I'm going to be honest with you, um, when it comes to my visual impairment, um, I am farsighted, so I cannot see small print. So I have to use large print equipment, and I also have to make sure that the words are pretty large enough for me to see. And as well... For is triggering. Um, I would say I don't. I don't. I really don't. I would just say that's wonderful. Just, just embrace what you have. <laughs> just embrace. Absolutely. Now, when you were going to school, because you know you did indicate that you have a few. Um, certifications. Yes. Yeah. Yes. For body me, EKG. How did that work for you? Did you have to use that special um, reading equipment then or anything like that? I'm hot. Yes, I did have to use the special equipment during my courses. And I'm, I'm more so, Miss Purdue, a hands on per se. So when it came to the hands on, I didn't have any problems with it. But when it comes to written work, I had to use the enlarged print to make sure that I can understand every question. But I did excellent on my externships, did excellent on every job performances that I have done. And I just take it as continue to go, to continue to push, whether it's a challenge, whether it's a it's a fear, because when people find out that the fear is not big as what they, big as what they make it seem, they can get over it. 
they can get over it. Absolutely. I agree with you wholeheartedly. I just read something about fear, and I'm going to post it probably before I go to bed tonight. Um, basically, it's what you said. It's not that the fear is so big. It's that how we um, react yes. to what we find fearful. Yes. So if we, it's like, you know, with challenges, you know, one thing that we learn in counseling and that we share is that if there is something that causes fear for you, and we all have those, right, you need to understand that thing and figure out how to make it small. Understand it, but minimize it. Right. Your screen is going out. Did you move your phone? No. I didn't. Your, your phone is messed up. Okay. You see me now? It's blurred. It's blurred. Did you move something? No, I didn't move anything. What did you do? Did it move? Maybe it's the internet. I think it, it might be the internet. I think it is the internet. It's it's raining over here where I'm here. So it's, it might be the internet. Oh, it's raining in my memory. Well, I'm in Deepville, so I'm, it's raining. <laughs> You're in Deepville. That's where my adopted grandparents um, were from. Did you know the Parker family? I, Matt Parker. I haven't heard of him. He was the pastor of the Good Shit Missionary Baptist Church. He's deceased now, but that was my adopted grandfather. Really? Yes. Never knew All that. All of them. Andy, Matt Jr., Gary. Leon, that's my family. Wow, wow. See, now I know. So yeah, if I, if I a... see you, I'm going to tell I see Miss Charles Purdue. <laughs> yeah, honey, they know me. They know my family. Indeed, indeed. I love them so much. I haven't seen them in a while. I see Gary on Facebook, but Anna and Junior and Sherry. But Sherry on Facebook, I don't see her on there. Oh, when wow. you see my kinfolk, tell them hey for me. Give them a hug for me, my kinfolk. Oh, okay, I sure will. <laughs> Okay, okay. Well, I just want to thank you, sweetheart. You're such a blessing, such a beautiful person, inside and out. I want to thank you for having um, the insight and the courage to share with others about this genetic condition. One thing, one more thing before I close out. I knew there was something else. <laughs> How many brothers and sisters do you have? I have three sisters and four brothers. Okay. Because this is a question that came up that somebody sent me in my inbox when they saw this, um, that I was going to interview you on this topic. Do any of your siblings have albinism? No, ma'am. My parents are normal. My siblings are normal. But I will tell you, uh, I do have albino in my family, but it's on my dad's mother's side, and it does skip every fourth generation. So they are distant cousins, and so when I do have kids, it might skip my kids, my grandkids, even my great great grandkids. So it all depends on you know the genetic makeup, you know, of of my husband. Whoever you know, whoever he is, but <laughs> but um, yes, um, I I do have albinism in my family, but it's on my dad's side. Okay, it's interesting that it was skipped two, three, and sometimes four generations. Isn't that something? That is something. That, that is, is really phenomenal to me. Have you um? Met the family members. Actually, when on your I, dad's side, when I met them, Miss Purdue, I'm gonna be honest with you. When I met them, I was probably like the age of six or seven. They was like in their mid thirties, and actually, it was seven girls. Every last one of them was albino, and they was like in their mid mid thirties, early forties. Okay. Bold Addictions is saying, don't say normal because you're not abnormal. They're just not albino. I love it. <laughs> I love it, sis. I love it. And, you know, that's what Tina has been saying. You came in 
um, you know, towards the middle. But she started out saying, I'm not, it's not that I'm not normal. I just have this pigmentation that's different. Okay? So I appreciate you saying that, uh, both addictions, because she does embrace her normalcy. Yes. Right, Tina? Yes. Okay. Every day. <laughs> well, you know, you and I were doing some more chatting, and you told me about a town here in the state of Texas where I live. What is it that you told me about Texas and this condition? If you, if anyone ever visit Texas, I think it's Brownsville, Texas. And if you want to know what Miss Purdue is talking about, if you ever go down there, that's all you will see is albinos. And also, I just found out, Miss P- Miss Purdue, that the Bronx in New York City is filled with York. the Bronx is filled with albinos. Where did you find that out? Well, I found it out as maybe like 10 minutes before you and I came on because my dad, um, my dad and I, we used to travel. And when I used to go with my father, we was talking about um, where, how did Albano come, you know, how did they come about? And I have heard some people say where well, it can be low blood or it can be um sickness in the family or it can be a, a mother is not eating right or sometimes it's just genetic it just reached back into the family gene and so as i was talking with my father he would say you know the bronx has plenty of donuts too so if, if you ever wow. I'm to the, to. the bronx or even texas those two main cities has a lot of albinos. And I want to let everyone know, too, albino um, does not come just in African-American race. It comes in trees, animals, and different other races as well. So it's not just only the African-American culture, but it comes in every, every other different nationality. And you said trees. And trees, plants. And animals. And animals. Girl, you are educating us this evening. Yes. Because I bet you, I bet you, the average person only thinks that albinism impacts the African American race. But I know, like you, I have seen. Actually, there was a post on Instagram maybe a couple months ago. I have seen Caucasian people or people of the European persuasion who are albino. Yes. And that thing, when I saw that that young lady, oh, my God, she was like, you beautiful, beautiful. But you could tell that there was a pigmentation, you know, situation going on. And actually, you know what? My brother, my god brother's fiance, Deanna, posted it. It was on a TikTok. And this, this young lady was doing some type of expository on George Floyd. And oh my God, she was gorgeous, just like you, gorgeous. Oh, but she was you. a Caucasian albino. And she stated in her TikTok that she was a Caucasian albino. Yes. And I think you told me that you have seen people of the Latina culture. Hispanic, Latina, who were also albino. albino. Yes, yes. Actually, I went to Lee, and my first time witnessing another albino is when I went to Lee High School. So I, he was Robert also e. Robert E. Lee, and he was Caucasian as well. Wow. Okay. And wow. we in, in, in Montgomery, Alabama. Ma'am. In Montgomery, Alabama, right? Mo- Eli, Eli, Eli High School. Yes, in Montgomery, Alabama. And actually we sat and we chatted and and he was just saying, you know, how how do you embrace it? How how do you get over, you know, the name calling and I and like I was telling him, I said, you know, I never witnessed that, Miss Purdue. I, me personally, I never witnessed that because 
when I was growing up, I guess it was so rare. It was so rare, and a lot of people was just amazed. So now it's just you see so many people having albino kids now. You know, um, matter of fact, uh, about two or three days ago, uh, this couple they was young. They had three kids. Matter of fact, they were triplets: two boys and a girl. That was albino. Beautiful, mm -hmm. beautiful. Wow, where where were they at? What was region? We was in Montgomery, Alabama, and we was at Walmart. Beautiful kids. Really? Yes. Yes. Sure. So I, oh, my goodness. Yes. So I tell people, you know, now, you know, hey, I think our boundaries is just taking over the world now. <laughs> I just think we just, <laughs> Wait. we just have to embrace each other. You know, you just have to just, just let go and just like, you know, well, I'm not the only one. It's been facing this. I'm not the only one that has a family member that's going through this. Be honest with you. I think a lot of people want to know about albinism, but they're scared to ask. And they are, and some people are ashamed to ask. Like, you know, where do you all come from? How did it originate? And actually, I did not know. Albinism originated really from the North. It started in the North. The north, uh, northern states here northern, in the U.S.? Northern states. As far as them being known, albinism was very known in the northern states. More than okay. the northern and southern states. So now, okay. um, if a lot of people just, you know, go back and do their research, do their studies, now um, I'm finding out that a lot of doctors are trying to come up with medicine to cure albinism now. But I just say, I don't care, you know, what type of medicine that they come up with. I'm just going to be plain old Tina Freeman. I'm just going to embrace it. I know that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's right. You yes. can't be nobody but who you are, right? Yes. Dude. Yes. You just that's interesting. You know, you just, you make me want to just get on my Google and go crazy <laughs> researching um, cures medical research to cure albinism. Right. I had never heard of such a thing. I would never even fathom that. Yes, because I, I I'm going to tell you how I came in uh, uh, to know that information. I was doing a project for school and at the time, you know, when you have to go to the library to do your research, where well, it was this doctor and he just I guess I stuck out to him like a magnet. And we just striked up a conversation. He was like, you're so beautiful. He was like, you know, you know, we were just talking. He was like, they're doing research. They're doing studies about, you know, albinos. Um, we're doing studies about the pigmentation behind the eye cycle. How does it function? Why does it, why does Albino have the movement, the stigmatism of the eyes, and it and that comes with al albinism too, the stigmatism. A lot of people does not do, really? not do not know that. When you are an albino, it's not that we're cross-sided or we can't see. It's when you are born with albinism, and by we not having any pigmentation behind the skin or the eye socket, we tend to have the movements of the eyes. It's nothing we can do about it. Now, I have heard in some states that they do have surgeries for it, but who's to say the surgery would work? But the stigmatism comes along with albinism as well, as well. Interesting, interesting. You know, I have a stigmatism. Really? Never. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> well, you know, I think when I was maybe eight or nine, maybe, you know, I'm from San Francisco. I was born and raised in San Francisco, California, and we lived on a hill. And I was riding my bike down the hill one day, and a dog came after me. Oh, my God. And when I saw that dog, I was trying to get away from him. <laughs> I didn't want to get bit. <laughs> and my bike did this down the hill and threw me, oh. and I had a corneal abrasion. Okay. That caused me to have astigmatism. So 
you know, they, they, they correct that in my lens too. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. So we got some things in common. You know, it's interesting because I know that albinism, you're usually, it, it's an innate thing. You're born with it, you know, but there are people, I know people who have lost their pigmentation mm-hmm. and I, I do have some spots on me, on my feet, on my legs, on my arms and little bite and dots. And some of them have grown where the pigment was leaving. And so I asked my doctor a few years ago, am I going to lose my pigment? And he said, no. You know, but it's good to talk about these things. It's good to educate oneself. It's good to know people like you. Thank you. Thank you. I believe this, Tina. I believe, because my parents taught me this, that we can learn something from everybody that we come in touch with. We should learn something. Yes. Yes. You have so much knowledge, grace, and wisdom to share. So much love in your heart. Thank you. You have so much to give, you know, so much to impart. And I am excited about you stepping out and walking into your purpose. Yes. Yes. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm just taking one day at a time, Ms. Purdue, but I'm just so elated. Just very excited. I have so much support, so much just love Sean say, hey, go for it, do it. And when I tell you, every time I turn around, I look back how far I have came and where I am now, it just brings joy to my heart. It does. It really does. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I say to you, my sister, go forth. Go forth and do even greater things than what you have already done because there is no roof. The car ain't got no roof. <laughs> and you know how that goes. They say that ain't got no roof. <laughs> you know, right? The governor. Car ain't got no roof. And the sky is what? The limit. The sky is the limit. The sky is the limit. Is and the let limit. me just, before we leave, Miss Purdue, let me just send some encouraging words to any other uh, albinos or anyone that's going through. Um, having a loved one that is struggling with albinism, always be their support. Always be positive. Always love on them. Show love, love to them. Always encourage them. But as well, make sure that they love on their self. And I tell people, you can get all the love and support you want from others, but make sure you love yourself. Yourself and self-love is the best thing. And once you realize that God created you in his own unique way, and you just accept it, embrace it, and just, like I say, just be divified with it. Be a fashionista <laughs> with it. Hey, just be divified with it, because you have to just say, divified. just love, just love it. You know, you have to embrace it, and you just don't know, Miss Purdue. I have, I have many people tell me I have touched them in so many ways, where it is um, encouraging them overcoming their vision impairment and and even having heart disease. So I just say, you know, mm-hmm. embrace your loved ones. Have a strong, be around positive minded people. Be strong. Even when you don't feel like it, because these days I still struggle. These days I still don't want to do it, but I just have to push myself. And I just tell others, continue to just do you. Don't let no one or nobody or nothing stop you. Just embrace it. (laughs) Embrace it. Embrace Embrace. Embrace it. Do you. We're going to end this Instagram Story Live on Unfiltered with Carl Jones Unlimited Podcast with the hashtag Do You. Do You.
Divified. Be divified. Yes, be divified. Well, girl, you done taught me a new word. <laughs> Yeah, I love you, Tina. I love you. With all I love heart. you. Thank you so much. Anytime. You're just a girl. Thank you. Thank you. And I just want to tell Miss Purdue, thank you for having me on tonight. I learned from her as well. And I just continue mm-hmm. to just, we're going to embrace each other, Miss Purdue. We're going to love on each other. And we're just going to continue just be deified. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, yes, you know, yes, but thank you. And if well, you know, go on, sweetie. I'm sorry. If anyone else wants to know where they can reach me, I am on Instagram, mm-hmm. Queen Tina, and I am. I also am on TikTok. I am on. Mm-hmm. I am under Two Bless Thirty Two. And that's where I can be reached. Yes. That is excellent. Thank you for sharing your contact information. That is something I always ask my guests to share before we close because somebody may see this interview on YouTube when I post it. They may hear it on Anchor, on Spotify, on Google Podcasts, Radio, Public, Pocket Cast one of those other platforms and they might want to reach out to you and you have no problems with that right no ma'am if they need just a word of encouragement or they just need a prayer i am like i said i am on instagram queen tina and i also can be reached through tiktok to bless 32. okay well we thank you my love and thanks to all of you who joined in on our live tonight. We are thankful that you took time out of your busy schedules to participate. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for your encouragement, okay, and um, your salutations. This is Shanta Purdue signing off with Unfiltered, the Car Jones Unlimited podcast. Love you, Tina. Love you, too. Have a great one. Okay. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Happy weekend, everybody. Have a Bye-bye. great weekend. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay. That was Unfiltered with Carl Jones Unlimited LLC Podcast. Again, I just want to thank you all. For those of you who popped in, thank you so much. I know it's a Friday night. Y'all really can't go nowhere because we're quarantined. <laughs> But thank you for spending time with us. You have been a blessing. And I hope that this health um, series episode two on albinism has been informative and educational for you. If you have a topic that you would like for um, me to cover on my podcast, feel free to inbox me. You know my handle here is at cmhc. CAP 2019, my new Instagram account since um, last year. Um, just DM me the topic. If you have questions, um, feel free to inbox me. If you would like to be featured on my podcast, feel free to inbox me. You can also email me at Cara, that's C A R A, dot Jones, J O N E S, dot CEO at gmail.com and I will be happy to talk to you. Thank you all. Hey, there goes my graphic designer. Hey, Jerome. Jerome Harden Studio. Jerome, I'm still using this flyer. Look on my page here and see all of the interviews I've done with this wonderful Unfiltered with Carl Jones Limited LC podcast that you created for me. Thank you to everyone. I'm signing off.